the 19th of February, and uh, I'm getting ready, man. It's getting close to happening. I've been ready for a long time, actually. Um, I just wanted to mention here, people, you know, a lot of you guys living in your homes, things that are okay right now, but uh, it's not going to be that way much longer. Everybody's. I've been going through this for several months. I've noticed it getting worse since 2001, actually. But uh, a lot of you guys that are living in your homes, you got money, things are just fine, you know, it's always been fine. But when disaster hits, um, people are going to loot all these stores. And you won't be going shopping, getting your groceries like you used to get in them. Um, it, what I'm trying to do is warn people that have family. Um, look, have plenty of bottled water on hand. Because when it gets bad, bad, nasty and stuff like that, power is cut off. It's going to get nasty, man. When power is cut off, um, people are going to be very uncomfortable in their homes. It's not going to be pleasant. Um, but if you don't have water, if you got a family, kids in your houses, listen, I know the rapture is going to happen, but the Lord's going to try to get as many people as he can go. You know, so we may have a disaster and we may be here for, who knows, a week, two weeks, or a month before he takes us. I don't know, because nobody knows the day or the hour, but I know it's at hand. It's very close to happening. Um, so this message is basically, I'm wanting people to get prepared. If you got family, you know, um, I'm a single person, okay? I've got four cases of water back there in my truck right now. That's a lot for one person. I can make those four cases last me two months easily, okay? But here in a couple of days, I'm going to probably go get two more cases of water. Okay, so I'll have about six cases of water altogether, maybe five and a half by the time I'm done. But uh, anyhow, um, also another thing, I buy those Ritz crackers, get several boxes of those. It may not be the bread that you're used to eating off of, but they're crackers. You can put food on top of them and eat them. You know, get those little cans of chicken in a can or tuna fish in a can that don't require draining, no water draining. Because remember, if things get cut off, you ain't got no place to squeeze this stuff out. The smell and stuff like that, you want it, whatever you open, you want to be able to eat and seal it up, keep it um, from smelling, you know. I'm not even sure if your plumbing gets cut off, what's going to happen, how bad it could be. If your plumbing gets cut off, trust me, man, people aren't going to want to stay in those buildings because once the smell, it's going to get nasty. And they're going to want to, you'd rather be out in the woods with the bears than smelling nasty, foul odors. Um, what I do is um, get the crackers, like I said. You see these little, they cost a dollar a piece right now. They got all kinds of different flavors, man. I buy these, a lot of them. I got about 50 of them right now. And here in a couple of days, I'm going to probably go buy another, uh, probably another 50 of them. And I'll probably get another box or two of crackers. And uh, when I can't afford it, which I can't anymore, I would, I would go to like Chick-fil-A. And uh, you see here? I'd go to Chick-fil-A and I would order a chicken sandwich. Normally they keep these behind the counter. They'll only give you one with your sandwich. I always tell them I want four. If you ask for them, they'll give them to you. Then on the front counter, they'll have packets of mustard and uh, mayonnaise. I'll grab a handful of those, throw them in the bag. I get my food to go. I'll grab a handfuls of them, and I'll throw them in my bag each time I go. The reason why is because you can't op when you open up a jar of uh, mayonnaise, you got to refrigerate that stuff. Where here, these little packets, you tear one open, squirt it in, man. You're good to go. Doesn't, you know, don't have to refrigerate this stuff. It doesn't have to be refrigerated till it's opened. You see what I'm saying? And uh, like this barbecue sauce, I can mix this in a small can of uh, chicken. And I got a barbecue chicken sandwich. You know what I mean? And I've got a bunch of those little cans of chicken in the back back there. I don't know how many I got. Maybe four or five now. But I've got cans of tuna and uh, these tuna fish things. I got soup. All kinds of different soups. I got those cup of soups, those instant cup of soups where you got to boil water for them. Um, a lot of these little packets of these things, mayonnaise, mustard, 
um, even sweet relish. You know, I grab all that because that sweet relish tastes real good on these. You know, mixing it with that. And they're cheap enough. And, you know, these here, if you had to, you could make two sandwiches out of these. I make one, you know, one's perfect. But I'm just saying, if you had to, I mean, if I met somebody out there and it's getting rough and stuff like that, man, I'm not going to leave somebody out there starving. Yeah, but if they got a demon in them, the devil in them, and they're looting, stealing, talking about all that, I'm going to be far away from those people. But uh, I'll help the, anybody that's around me that's, um, I know that they got the Lord in their heart. Because like I said, no one knows the day or the hour. The Lord's going to try to get people, and it could take a disaster to do it. I don't know. But I don't like to hear when people are saying, Lord, give us more time. We're not ready. We're not ready. Well, listen, I've been going through this for since 2001. This didn't just start for me. And uh, every year was worse than the year before. And then when the housing market crashed in 2008, seven years later, it was really bad. And then I started noticing neighbors of mine bragging about how cheap they were getting people to do stuff because they were desperate. And I looked at those people and I said, that's wrong. When people are desperate and you're using them, getting it, and taking advantage, and he was boasting about it, that was wrong. And uh, it was just wrong, you know. I mean, there was an old lady across the street. I went over there to help her out, and she's living on Social Security. My wife didn't like that either. My ex-wife, she thought I should try to get anything I can get from people. And I told her, I said, Maggie, it's slow. I said, you make good money. I said, we got this house all fixed up and everything. I said, you're making enough money to make our payments. Don't worry about it. Something will happen. Something will come along. Well, that wasn't enough for her. She wanted me to be making money any way I could make it. And I wasn't going to cheat and compete to try to make it. So, therefore, we ended up going through a divorce. And I caught her with a married police officer and... Um, I was living around Tarpon Springs at that time when uh, Tarpon Springs Lake with a Greek Orthodox built a cross in. I think I was meant to see all this stuff. And uh, I kept seeing 1221 all the time on my truck radio. 1221. See, the 12, if you flip it over, it, you know, it looks like the 21. It looks like the 12, you know what I mean? But anyhow... Um, while I was walking my dog around that park, the Greek Orthodox Church had a, uh, a Greek dive where the children, every year it's on the news too, the children will dive in there after that cross. Well, that morning at about 4 in the morning when they're getting ready to have it, like I said, I lived right down the road and me and my dog Troy every morning would walk around there. I got him, found him in the street too as an old Labrador. I kept him because I knew he was old and uh, the... Humane Society would have put them down if they got their hands on them. And nobody wanted him because he was old, so I took him. But anyhow, uh, he's gone now. But anyhow, um, I was walking around there with him, and Troy stopped right in front of the uh, um, dock where they dive off of that because they had it all roped off. And I'm sitting there waiting on him to do his thing, you know. All of a sudden, I seen something black coming up out of the water where they dive for that cross. And I looked. I thought it was a manatee at first. And, uh, and I'm watching it as it's steadily coming up out of the water. And this thing looked like a man, but it had a round sombrero Spanish hat on, like the Spaniards would wear that's doing the bull run. You know, the toro, toro, with the red thing or whatever, wearing tight clothing, too. But it was round and it was black as black, man. You couldn't see the face or anything. Just you could see the outlining image of it all. Because it was so pure black. And I walked up real close to it to get a better look. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not believing what I'm seeing. And I'm looking around the edges of it. You know, because I'm figuring this hat, it just came out of the water. I'm looking for something to drip off of it. You know, little driplets in the water. Nothing. I mean nothing. Man, where, where it says we're dealing with uh, darkness, evil principalities, that's what this was, man. It was dark as could be. And that's what's upon us right now. And it's revealed in itself, too. I've been seeing it for several years now. 
But uh, I never see another image like that again. What happened, it's, it looked at me, and it started going back down into the water. <clears throat> Just like that picture I have of me with that angel above my head, you know, blowing the trumpet. You know, I mean, I'd never seen this until that year, 2014. If you look at it, let me see. You see right here? That's the end of the trumpet right there. That little round thing in the mirror. It's a spirit. And you can see the stem to it. And then that's the angel. It's a small angel where my finger is. And see there, there's a white horse. Can you see it? You might have to pause your camera to get a better look at it. This is an old piece of paper. I used to hand a lot of these out. And, uh... Um, to churches and stuff. And like I said, everybody's rejected my message. But anyhow, that black image went back into the water, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not believing what i just seen, you know? And uh, that day, the Greek Orthodox Church, when they threw their cross in the water, the kids all dove in there after it, and they'd never found it. And then uh, that, that church guy, he just happened to have a second one with him, Every year, for years, this is a tradition. They've been throwing it forever. And they never, ever had to throw a second one. But they just happened to have a second one with them that day. That's what I'm saying. They're all part of it. These are demons, evil. Threw that second one in there. And then at the same time, two kids came up, one with each. And they said their belief was one would be blessed. You know, the one that got the cross would be blessed. Well, the end days, it says one will be accepted and the other will be rejected. <clears throat> I was on a treadmill running one day and there was an accident up the street where a crossing guard was killed by somebody that ran a red light and fleeing from an officer or something. And I didn't see it because I've been working out in this place on a treadmill and they got music in there. It's kind of loud and... I didn't even really notice the traffic backed up right in front of my window where I'm running on this machine. You know, I'm just not, I've already been on it for over 40 minutes and I'm tired. And I didn't really, wasn't paying attention to the car that was in front of me and uh, in front of the window there. And then all of a sudden, until an ambulance came up right behind it and its lights were right in front of me. You know, and I'm like, wow, you know. And, uh, and then when the ambulance went around that car, because he had to wait, because this was like two-lane traffic only, you know, one lane this way, one lane this way. And uh, when that ambulance went around that car, I looked at my machine, and my machine said 44 minutes and 44 seconds. And then I looked at that car tag when the ambulance went around that car, and it said 44-T-B-U, like to be you. 44 to be you and I'm thinking what the heck what is that it was weird you know to see all these numbers on my machine 44 minutes and 44 seconds then see a car tag that said 44 dash TBU this stuff is all preordained man I mean the Lord he's using me for something here I know and I well the 44 to be me Obama's the 44th president I didn't know it at the time a week later, I heard on the news, who's going to be the 45th president? You know, with all these people running for president. I'm going, Obama's the 44th, and, and the Lord ordained me to be the 44th, which that would be impossible by man because people wouldn't, uh, I'm like a nobody to these people. And the Lord, you know, because I had people saying, do you know how to fix this problem? I said, yeah, I know how. And, uh, but uh, a lot of these people would have to go, a lot, and they'd be in trouble, too, um, in Washington, you know. I mean, I wouldn't let them just walk away with their lives. They'd lose everything, including their lives. But, uh, you know, nobody, they're going to they're gonna follow these people to the end. It's evil. All this stuff is preordained because the Lord spoke about it. The, you know, I guess the Lord, you know, he blessed me to be the 44th, but... It's to be rejected, you know. I'm going to be totally rejected in this world, you know. 
I mean, I know he made King David and all that way back then. And, uh, you know, but that was in the beginning times. And these are the end times, you know. So, um, you know, it is just the way it is. Uh, like that little angel blowing a trumpet above my head, you know. And then me seeing that spirit, that black spirit coming up out of the water, I was meant to see all this stuff to let me know these are the end times. Just like I kept seeing 1221. Everything started coming out at me. But I noticed it happening in 2001 when the Twin Towers went down. President Bush read Psalms 23. And then seven years later, President Obama doubled that. 23 and 23 is 46. And if you read Revelations 18, it says in there three times to double their portion. Three times it says double their portion. And uh, so what happened was when Obama read Psalms 46, that's when the housing market crashed, 777 points. And everything's going over everybody's head, but it's also written God will send strong delusions to people so that they may be damned. In other words, they're going to be left behind for the great tribulation. And if they deny the Lord's name one more time, they get worldly, lustful, they're going to, you know, they're going to die. They're going to perish. But anyhow, you notice the sevens in the housing market, plus notice how Obama doubled what Bush read. And that seven years passed from Bush, and seven years passed from Obama. And then what happened seven years after Obama this past September? The Pope showed up to Washington, and he came in his own name. Jesus Christ said that would happen. Somebody come in their own name, and everybody would accept him. Not only did they accept him, the House of Congress, which was divided, they welcomed him. John Boehner said, we welcome you. You know, so he was really accepted. And Jesus said a house divided could not stand. And uh, that's basically what happened here. People accepted what's evil and perverted, and... Uh, you know, this, these are the end times, man. This was last September. So I know, like those people trying to get me to go back to uh, Mobile right now, something bad's going to be happening there, whether they know it or not. Because these are spirits just controlling these bodies of people that were living an abomination to God. They truly didn't believe in Jesus Christ, you know. Um these are spirits trying to lure me back into a place that I don't need to be going back to. And because uh, you got to remember, when these bodies die that these people are in, these spirits are just going to leave them and go host somebody else. You know, and it's not hard to find somebody to host today because most of these people are so worldly and dead in Christ. Um, they can enter you because of that. Jesus came here and he said, those that know me will follow me. They'll hear my voice, they know, and those that don't, won't, you know, the, and this, this is a spiritual thing, these aren't like UFOs like you think, Jesus said, I'm not from this world, you know, but he came here to let us know, he's the Lord of hosts, he's the son of God, man, God created all this, you know, and you're either going to be with him, or you're going to be with the devil, and uh, God created a place for the devil too, you know. Unfortunately, a lot of people made that bad choice, you know, and they still are. But anyhow, I'm staying right here where I'm at until I'm told to do otherwise. And I'll do some more shopping, get some more things like I just showed you. And I get little snacks too, little cakes, little desserts, whatever. Potato chips too. And also get those sandwich sealing bags because when you open up a bag of potato chips, you want to put that inside there and... Uh, bag it up, you know, so that way they don't go stale on you, or, you know, I don't know how many people are going to be with you, but you got to stretch it out and know how much you're eating every day. Just eat enough to get by, you know, because no one knows the day or the hour, but therefore watch, and that's what I am doing. I am watching, and I know it's at hand, and it's going to happen any time. I had that vision the other day where I took my glove off, and I had light coming out of my fingertips. And I was like, wow. And then my whole hand turned transparent. In other words, like I was changing in a moment in the twinkling of the eye. There's going to be two raptures. There's going to be the rapture of the wise, 
virgins that go to the wedding, then there's going to be the rapture of the foolish. See, that's what a lot of people don't understand. The foolish, where they read in the Bible, it says, those that are alive and remain will be caught up with those that died in Christ. Listen to the words. Those that are alive and remain. In other words, those are the foolish brides that weren't ready. And it says, you know perfectly well that the Lord does come as a thief in the night. Now, why is that that it would say that? Those that are alive and remain, you know perfectly well that the Lord does come as a thief in the night. I've been trying to warn people, and I've been so rejected, man, even by the churches, because they know what I'm telling is the truth. And uh, they've got a demon in them, and they don't want you to know. You know, they're all about souls, man. They want to get as many souls as they can, but the Lord's going to probably get this out to where some people do. I'm going to upload this right now on uh, YouTube. Um, I probably won't be doing so many of them anymore because um, I don't know if this eats up my gigabytes on my camera. And uh, I'm doing this through the store right now. And I don't have, you know, I got to be careful because this is all I've got. And I ain't asking nobody for nothing. But. If anybody has any work and they're in this area here, I'm in Birmingham area. I don't care if I got to go to Atlanta, around here, someplace. I'll drive up to 100, 100, 200 miles. I don't care. But I'm not going around the coastal area. Um, and I want to work preferably for those that love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know it's the end time, but if you can afford, you want me to do a little bit of work for you, it'd be great. It would help me out. I'm not looking for any handouts. I'm just looking for work. You know, I, I believe in working. But anyhow, God bless, man. And remember what I said, man. We got to prepare. Don't wait to the last minute. I wouldn't be telling you to get water and food that don't require refrigeration. And keep gas, gas cans filled. I got three full five back there filled in my vehicle, ready to go. And I keep my tank filled. Filled, not on empty. I don't care the next day. If I go someplace today and I use $3 worth, I'm going to top it back off. You know, keep it filled, ready to go. I'd have four or five of those filled back there if I had the money to do it. It cost me $13 for the can and it cost me $8 to fill it. You know, but that's how important it is to have gas on hand because they said gas is so cheap now that it's not worth pumping. <clears throat> pumping out of the ground because if they keep lowering it they 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 can't do it that's why they're you know it's going to get wicked here people just be ready okay like i said be prepared man be smart man don't trust the media you know there are demons in these people i know it sounds weird but uh remember it's about souls man they want your soul okay so don't be deceived and uh be prepared. Have some stuff ready to go. And don't be thinking you can live and hang out in your house because if water and plumbing gets shut off, man, it's going to stink fast. 